Hello again, and welcome back. Rumor has it, there's a dolphin somewhere inside the GameCube. I'm going to tear down this GameCube to find out if that rumor is true. Spoiler alert, there is. Feel free to skip to this point in the video to see the dolphin. Otherwise, come along with me as I take this cube apart. I found this broken GameCube on eBay for about $20. Looking at it in person, I can tell that it's had a rough life. Lots of scratches all over the outside, as well as damage. It looks like parts were cut out of it. I'm not sure. The top was also stuck shut, and the open button did not open it, but it was no match for a screwdriver. Inside, we see the mini DVD drive, uh, along with the lens, uh, which I couldn't resist touching. Getting into the cube isn't too hard if you have the right tools. Nintendo loves to use their specialty screws uh, on all of their electronic devices, which the GameCube has four of. After removing these screws, the top shell lifts off, revealing the internal components inside. It looks like this fan is going to be in the way, so I'll remove this next. The fan appears to be held in with two Phillips screws, which are easy enough to remove. And I guess this piece just came out. The front panel lifts up and is only connected to the motherboard with a ribbon cable which pulls straight up and that's it. I never realized there was a coin cell battery here. I wonder what it's used for. Next, there are a whole bunch of screws that need to be removed. I don't know how many, but you can definitely count them if you want to. The screws go all around the outside of this top metal shell. Coming back around to the front side, uh, I did need a smaller screwdriver to remove these last four screws holding these brackets in place. With all the screws off, the top part lifts off, revealing the main board below. The motherboard for the GameCube is surprisingly small and compact. There are six more Phillips screws attaching the circuit board to the bottom case through the heatsink that need to be removed. Looking at the back side, we can really see why this is a junk unit. It appears as though some small child or adult shove something sharp and stabby into the GameCube and cut deep into the circuit board. Definitely not worth trying to repair, and now I feel slightly better about what is coming next. I used a bit of heat to warm up the aluminum and soften the thermal compound attaching it to the components below. The thermal compound is kind of smushy. I used a batarang to remove it from the bigger part. This chip is the GPU, nicknamed the Flipper, and was designed by ATI. It runs at 162 megahertz. Directly below it is the CPU a 32-bit IBM PowerPC 750 chip codenamed Gecko. It runs at a slightly faster 485 MHz. I used hot air to remove all of the parts on the top side of the circuit board. The 
the bigger parts put up a little bit more of a fight, but I eventually got them all. Next, I need to remove the silicon chip from inside of the part, which is easier said than done. I use more hot air, this time just hotter than before, and hope that the chip releases from the epoxy. I used a cutter to pry back the fiberglass section from the top metal lid and things seem to be going pretty good up until this point. It quickly became obvious that there was going to be a little bit more involved to actually separate the silicon chip from the remaining epoxy dough. And to do this I would need to use a new technique. Uh, this technique is melting pine gum rosin in a test tube and placing the part into the boiling rosin. Uh, the rosin is slightly acidic uh, and the acid that's inside of it will slowly eat away at the epoxy and leave the silicon dye behind untouched. Just a warning for anybody else doing this at home, the fumes released by this uh, can be bad for your health and it should be done outside if at all possible. After the rosin treatment, uh, the chip can soak in acetone to remove any leftover rosin. And you can see here, it's a little dirty still, but actually there was one spot that was missed. But it's not covering anything important that we need to see. Well, here's the moment of truth. Is there a dolphin? Yes, there is a dolphin. We'll come back to the dolphin in a minute here, uh, but first I just wanted to take a quick zoom around the chip and see if there's anything else interesting. Please uh, bear with me as I zoom in and focus everything and uh, apologize for the jumpiness. It's a little hard to get uh, things focused with the microscope knobs just, just exactly correct. It looks like this corner broke off and there may have been something interesting uh, like the ATI logo in the upper corner. Uh, I just, I guess we'll never know. I'll have to open up another chip to uh, confirm or deny that. But as we go down a little bit further, we can see in the bottom corner here, there is another marking that also broke off. Uh, zooming in just a little bit to see closer here, we see a copyright of 2000 and flipper written on the chip. Uh, there's also, zooming in a little bit further, you can see there was another bit of text or logo. Looks like a, uh, a big fancy X. Uh, so that's also unfortunate that that corner broke off, but uh, hopefully it wasn't anything too exciting. I'm going to stop talking now and you can just view the chip without my voice.
Well, that's it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.